Okay. What's the biggest threat today to establishing peace in the Middle East? There are two uh, basic problems. The first is the Arab unwillingness to uh, recognize not simply the state of Israel, but any independent non-Arab entity. They do not tolerate non-Arabs or non-Muslims as independent equals. They're willing to accept them in a state of subjugation. And this, uh, this is the background for their repeated attempts to destroy the state of Israel. That's one factor. The second factor is the repeated arming of the Arab armies by the Soviet Union. They've rearmed the Arabs after each war, five wars now. They're arming the Syrians now. That is a major threat to peace. We talk about, we know the PLO is heavily uh, armed with sophisticated Soviet arms, uh, military weapons. Um, is there as much brain behind the PLO as there is bronze from the Soviet Union? Well, I think the Soviets have been helping the PLO uh, throughout the 1970s. They uh, are the principal patron of the PLO today outside the Arab world. Uh, I don't think it's possible to conceive either of the growth of the PLO or of the emergence of uh, international terrorism without the uh, combined partnership between the Soviet Union and the PLO. So it's uh, not simply a question of uh, whether they supply them with guidance or weapons. Uh, they are both in cahoots because they're after the same political objectives, and that is the dismantling of all Western positions in the Middle East and beyond the Middle East. So that, that's the ultimate goal of that alignment between the Soviet Union and the PLO? I think so, and it goes beyond uh, just uh, a political uh, interest. It goes also into the deep hostility that both feel towards democratic uh, regimes or democratic governments and the democratic way of life. PLO is based on terror. The Soviet Union system is based on internal terror. And there's a natural affinity between these two, uh, these two groups. So can we then draw a conclusion between, or a correlation between uh, what's happening in the Middle East with terrorism and other parts of the world, Central America, for instance? Well, uh, the PLO had the base for international terrorism in Lebanon. Uh, this was a country that turned out to be essentially the terrorist headquarters for many, if not all, of the terrorist groups that operate in the West or in the non-communist world. There's no terrorism in Bulgaria, but there is terrorism in Rome, and in Tokyo, and in uh, Madrid, and in Britain. Any one of the, you name a Western capital and you're likely to have terrorists there. All of the terrorist groups that operate in those countries had, in most cases, links to the PLO. Many were trained by the PLO, including, for example, the Pope's assassin. Mm -hmm. So the, the PLO has been the chief instrument for spreading terror not only in the Middle East against anybody who would even think of moving towards peace with Israel, but has been the principal instrument of spreading terror throughout the world against the West and against the United States. Very good. Certainly Israel's uh, security is threatened by uh, the Soviet PLO posture in the Middle East. Uh, if you follow that thought through, uh, do you see a point at which U.S. security is in question as well? Well, I think that uh, in the Middle East, and I would go even beyond that, I think between Europe and Japan, America has no better ally than, the, than Israel. Israel is willing and able not only to defend itself, but if necessary, and if, uh, if it becomes apparent that by defending ourselves we also happen to defend American interests, we are, we are prepared to do so. And in this situation, there is no, no one else, really, to safeguard the Western position in the Middle East. If, for example, Jordan is threatened, uh, as it was in 1970, it was the threat of Israeli response that moved away the Syrians, who were acting with Soviet backing, from invading Jordan. Israel's position in the Middle East is a rock-hard Western position, and the Soviets and others know it, and for this reason we uh, do not have... Uh, we do not have their cooperation and their friendship. As, as important an ally as Israel then is to the United States and vice versa, um, how do you deal with uh, the decline in US support of US public opinion? Well, first uh, we have to, I think, be precise 
about where Israel stands in the U.S. public uh, public's mind. There have been many polls now for many years about Israel's popularity, and the situation today, uh, in uh, April of 1983, is that the popularity, Israel's popularity, is exactly the same as where it was, uh, say, about a year ago, before the Lebanese campaign. Now, I cannot uh, deny that we've had some problems in the intervening period, but I think the U.S. public now has had a chance to look at this whole business in perspective, to see, in fact, that what was accomplished in Lebanon was a great thing not only for Israel, but a great thing for America and the West in ridding it much of the plague of terrorism. And I think people also see whether the Arabs are genuinely interested in peace. I think all of that has come into perspective. And uh, as I say, the public opinion polls reflect that tenacious and continuing support for Israel. It is not flagged at all. Um, would you like to say to the American people, do you have a statement or any kind of uh, appeal that you'd like to, to state within the context of this special that we're doing? Well, I would like to tell the American people that Israel and America are natural allies. We both share a democratic way of life. We both have common foes that we need to defend ourselves against. And we also must not be sidetracked by differences and uh, disagreements which occur always between allies and partners. They occur even in marriages. We must maintain our focus on the common bond and work together towards cementing this alliance. Excellent. You're much more concise than I had hoped. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Good. I hope uh, you uh, 